All right, guys, it's Yara here. And today, I'm going to talk about the top five best decks post OP08. Uh, I don't think OP08 will change the meta drastically because none of the leaders in this set are uh, game breakers or meta changing. So the meta will stay relatively the same. Uh, some of the already existing decks will get more support, so they will get even better. But the huge shift will come post structure decks and post op09 so this is before the structure deck so uh post op08 so this is what i think the top five best decks are gonna be going forward so i'm also gonna have an honorable mention so if you think your deck is not on on the list it might have made the honorable mention so yeah let's get started but yeah uh king marco uh you know these leaders they're just not good enough in my opinion i'm just giving you a head so they're not good enough to be able to get into the top five so but let's begin so uh a top five we have nami so nami is a deck that really punishes the players that don't know how to play against it because uh one it forces players to have to do math because you have to calculate how much dawn do they have how, how much counter can they put up so Sometimes a 7k attack is not even enough to get to their life. Sometimes you have to go 9, you have to go 11, you have to go pretty high just to be able to break and take one of Namis' lives. So uh, it's a pretty uh, tricky tricky deck because sometimes you're like, oh, they don't have any characters on the field, but they have a lot of Dawn up, which means that if their hand is pretty full, uh, then uh you know they're, they're gonna be able to activate a lot of counters, they're gonna be able to dodge some of those attacks, and if if you the, the longer the game goes, the, the higher the chances of Nami winning the game goes. And they're able to, you know, bounce back their 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 cards that allow them to draw even more cards. So uh, this really punishes players that don't know how to play against this deck. Plus, uh, Doflamingo is not popular right now. This, this is before the structure deck. So uh, after the structure deck, I may have to do another list like this. But as of right now, a good... Uh, Black Yellow Luffy is very good against this deck, plus Doflamingo, but Black Yellow Luffy is still popular, but post-structure deck, things are going to change. But as of right now, this is top 5 in my list. So, now we're going to go to Jewelry Bonnie. So, Jewelry Bonnie is very, it rewards those players that know their matchups. They know what characters they should rest, they know how to always leave a Dawn up because, uh, you know, you never know exactly when somebody's going to be able to... Uh, take all your lives during their turn so also they're getting carrot and carrot is going to be a really good addition to this deck i still don't know if you need two three or four of it but you should just pick up four just in case especially if you're a jewelry bonnie player plus or if you're a green player in general i think you should still pick up four of them because uh being able to rest a character very very good so uh yeah it really rewards those players that know their matchup plus hody jones is very good versus black yellow luffy because Sometimes Black Yellow Luffy thinks, oh, I can just keep, uh, you know, getting my lives up every turn. But Hody Jones is there to be like, nope, I'm going I'm to take your your life this turn, right? I'm not going to give you another turn. You can't keep doing the same thing anymore. So Hody Jones is a very good character. Very, very good character. And so that's why I have uh, Jewelry Bonnie as number four. So now we're going to go to number three. We were mentioning Black Yellow Luffy. Black Yellow Luffy is very good it recently won a big event uh got first place despite not being the most represented deck it actually won a big event so uh this deck you know gecko moria is still a card that's legal somehow you know uh everybody thought it was gonna get banned but it didn't get banned and gecko moria just synergizes so well with this deck because being able to revive two or some uh just play two characters and then uh, you know, those two characters are able to jump into the bigger characters, plus uh, Ace is a very good card, especially against decks like Nami, decks that want to prolong the game. Ace makes it so that, you know what, we're going to do this right now. Plus, being able to run four uh, Sabos, being able to get those draws, being able to protect your characters from being KO'd. Uh, Sabo is such a good card in this deck because you can just keep recycling, keep recycling, getting those cycles, drawing two, trashing two. Um, this deck can utilize uh, Sabo so well. It's it's a nightmare against uh, you know like black decks in general because uh, black decks want to KO stuff, but you know Sabo is there to prevent that from happening. So that's why I have Black Yellow Luffy as the number three deck. So 
now for the number two deck we have you know Reiju. you know there's a little card called black maria that's going to come out in op08 and black black this Reiju is a deck that synergizes the most out of black maria even more than king even more than uh other purple decks you know Reiju is just uh the best deck with black maria especially uh the fact that you can just cheat out ichiji you can cheat out uh your big characters you're able to end the game a lot quicker than people want their games to end because uh, this deck kind of wants to end the game in the in the mid game before those really big characters come out those 10 cost characters so now that black maria is there it's gonna help close out the games even quicker especially because it's a three cost character that means that you don't really have to wait a long time to be able to play this character plus 2k counter so if you open multiples of it you can still just drop it as a 2k counter huge huge card for this deck so that's why i have reiju as the number two deck so now we're gonna go to honorable mentions honorable mentions we have st14 luffy this is a very good counter versus black deck especially because of the stage which you know raises the cost of your characters a lot of cards in this deck just you know just gives it plus one cost or, you know so this deck is a nightmare against decks that want the opponent's cost to be low so uh makes it really awkward especially if you're playing a black deck that you know it relies on having stuff at one or two costs so you can pop it you know st14 luffy makes it so it makes it really awkward right like if you've played this matchup you know how awkward it can be because then you have to you know use your ice ages you have to use other stuff just to get rid of small bodies and sometimes the really big bodies like there's no way you can get to them right so uh yeah this is a really good counter versus decks that want to pop stuff so uh sd14 luffy is very good it's a, a huge representation in the in the past uh, in this big event that happened over the weekend and it, it almost took the event honestly it almost took the event but this is pre uh, op08 so uh, I think things are going to change post OP08 because, the, the, like I said, the meta won't sh shift drastically, but some of the pre-existing decks are going to get stronger. So, And I also have an L. So an L is sort of like Nami. Like, like I said, it rewards, uh, you know, playing against players that don't know how your deck works, that they don't they know, you know, against an L, you have to uh, leave them at two life and then build a board and then... You know, go for, go go for the game, right? Just go for game. Either two or one life, preferably two, because sometimes if they if they're at one life, they can they can do some tricky stuff to get their life up. So, um, and L, like I said, it rewards players. It rewards playing against players that don't know how this deck works. So, uh, but I'm basing this list off of you know you're playing against people that know how your deck work, right? Like if you're playing against people that don't know how your deck works, then of course any deck is good, right? So. Uh, these are the honorable mentions, SD14, Luffy, and, and Nell. So you might be wondering, so what is the number one deck? What, what do you think is the number one deck post OP08? And I think you've already guessed it. It will be Rob Lucci. Rob Lucci is getting two huge cards in this set, right? They're getting the Who's Who, which is a 2K counter. Uh, plus, it also, you're able to trash a card in hand and KO one of your opponent's characters with the cost of three or less. So... Uh, this card will be huge. This is easily a four off in this deck. It's uh, honestly is is has Rob Lucci written all over it, right? This is a perfect card for this deck. Uh, plus, they're getting Jack. Jack will be a, a huge card as well that's able to out some problematic cards. So uh, Jack is either a three or a four off as well. Uh, it's huge body plus the fact that it's uh it gains cost means that it's gonna make it even harder to be able to ko it so uh rob lucci had the most representation and we've seen a lot of reports from op09 and op08 and the ocg and rob lucci is still tearing things apart right? they're still tearing things apart sure they lost their stage but they don't really need their stage uh rob lucci really rewards players that can uh that can hold their you know their ice ages or their pistols until uh, a really problematic card comes out on the field right like if you're just using your ice age you're just using your uh your events just like like it doesn't matter then you deserve to lose you honestly do deserve to lose a good rob lucci player will hold it until you know that card that you really need to out comes out and 
the another thing that a lot of people oversee when it comes to Rob Lucci is that sometimes you you're meant to beat the Rob Lucci player. Like you, you're playing perfectly, you're doing the right moves, you're you're attacking when you have to attack, you're doing everything. But you know, sometimes they mill enough cards, they mill the right cards, you know, they mill those Rebecca's, they mill those Spandines, and then gets to le, le, gets to uh they get eight on then get Moria comes out of nowhere they build their whole board back up and you're like i did everything i did i, I could do but now get Moria, you know those mills they were pretty good they were able to trash their the right cards and i just lost because it was like a casino almost right it was like a casino which uh you know in those scenarios you can't really control many things right you're uh there's not things that prevent stuff from being trash that are meta at the moment so you know, it's one of those things where uh, you just kind of lost because they got lucky, right? Uh, where the Rob Lucci player should have lost, but uh, they didn't. So, yeah, uh, who's who is going to be a huge card? Jack is going to be a huge card. Aside from that, I don't think the deck is going to change much. It's just going to be like what text you want to put in there, how many Ice Ages, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think of my post OPO8 list on the comments below. But I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.